in this video I am going to talk about voicing four part seventh chords. That is to say taking a seventh chord and voicing it into four parts. Now, initially you might think, well, that's pretty obvious. So I've got a four note chord and I want to voice it into four parts. So surely I'm just going to give one note to each voice part. And in essence, that is all it takes. It's a little bit more complicated than that. If you start, if you find yourself in certain voice leading situations and circumstances, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but primarily on a basic level, it is indeed as simple as I have a four voice chord with four notes in it, and I need to voice it into four parts, and so I'm gonna give each part one note. Now let's just look at that a minute, and then we'll uh, talk about some circumstances where that doesn't happen. So here I've written up, uh, we're assuming we are in C major, and I've written up a 5-7 chord in that key. That's G, B, D, F. It's the 7 chord that is found naturally on the 5th scale degree. And it's called 5-7, it's a major minor 7 chord. If you do not understand 7th chords, if you do not fully understand major minor 7th chords, or all the various types of 7th chord, major major, uh, minor major, so on and so forth, if you do not understand all the various 7th chords that you could potentially find, and particularly the ones that are most commonly found in uh, this kind of uh, tonal system of writing music, then uh, I think you need to go back and look at the videos that re relate to that from uh, last semester, from the earlier video series. So check you know that, but assuming you know about seventh chords, then this should not be a surprise to you. This is a major minor seven chord, it's a five seven chord, the dominant seven chord. And if indeed I were to write this out in four parts, the most logical thing to do is to take each of those and simply write it for each of the uh, voices that I need to cover. So I've got a, a G here, I'll put the B in here, I could put the uh, D up here, for example, and the F in here. And I've got all the notes there of this chord. I've got G, B, D, and F, the four notes of the seventh chord, spread out in a logical format. In this case, the top three notes are more or less evenly spread. You know, if you, there's about the same gap, give or take, between each of these. There's more of a gap between the tenor and the bass, but we, as we know, that's perfectly fine. More of a gap between tenor and bass is fine as long as these three are evenly spread or closer together. So that would work perfectly well. Um, could I do this again, but voice it slightly differently? Could I maybe put the G up here? Certainly, and then have a D up here. I'd put some stems on this. And then have, uh, so we've used G and B, maybe we put a B in here and the F um, in here. That would be perfectly fine too. That would be a perfectly acceptable major minor seven chord, a five seven chord. Right? I just take the four notes and I voice it out four notes, four for four in that sense. Four notes here for four voice parts over here. Perfectly acceptable and works well. Now, like triads, these chords do not always appear in root position. We are choosing to limit ourselves to root position at the moment. But before long, we'll start talking about what happens when you put these in inversion. And of course, there are some guidelines to bear in mind, and some, some uh, techniques and issues that you need to bear in mind when you start to put these chords into inversions. But the principle is still the same. You have four notes, and very often, because you have four notes and four voice parts, you will give one note to each voice part, you will voice your four part chords in four voices, one note per voice. It makes perfect sense. That said, it is possible to decide that you, for, for reasons, again, this would be to do with the circumstances, it would be to do with the chord that you are coming from and the chord that you are going to in a progression. And you may decide not often, but now and again, you may decide that you need to leave a note out from here, and that you would therefore take three of the notes and double one of those three notes to create a four note chord, leaving one of these notes out, and it is possible to do that. If you are going to leave a note out, you leave the fifth of the chord out. Then you double one of the other notes. Usually, the one you double is the root. So it is possible to have, say, a root doubled 
with the seventh of the chord and the third of the chord written in, say, in some format like that. That's okay, I'm not super keen on it because there's a larger gap here between the soprano and the alto, not the greatest. Another way this could occur would be if these two were reversed, like this. That might work, and I could certainly imagine a situation where you could have that, where you have two roots, one third and the seventh, and no fifth. That's possible. It can happen. You would not tend to drop out of the third of the chord because it helps to define the chord. You really can't drop the seventh out or else it's not a seventh chord anymore. Those two notes really have to be in. The root of the chord is pretty important for helping to establish the context of this chord. It's the fifth of the chord that's the one note that in certain circumstances could be dropped out. Like I say, this is going to be unusual, but it's possible, so I feel that you should know about it. Most of the time, you have four notes, four voices, so one note per voice is the logical way to voice your seventh chords in four parts. I've picked a 5-7 chord here for the example. Certainly that's the most common seventh chord, but the same basic principles apply to, say, a 2-7 chord, or might apply to a 7-7 seven, seven chord or any other chord that could potentially be a 7th chord. And as you know, you can build a 7th chord on any scale degree. So you could potentially have any of your scale degrees have a 7th chord that could be used. Some are certainly used more often than others. And when you use them, it doesn't matter where they're, what note they're based on. If you've got four notes, you would normally take four notes and put them into the four voice parts with the rare exceptions where you might drop the fifth of the chord out. I hope that uh, makes sense. We will, of course, look at this in context in a few videos' time, and then I think it will make more sense to you at that point in time. Thank you.